This, these are my new pads that I use for things. Um, I bought like a brick of these, these guest checks. Yeah, so I, I like those. It's really fun. They're a good conversation piece. And then as I'm doing an album, like I'm doing a new Joe album, so I put these up here like a short order cook. Like we need, you know, trumpet, and then we'll we'll write it down. Oh, and we'll fun! With a sweet little hook. Like Joe's crazy for it. He's like kept taking pictures of it. It's good um, to have fun. Makes you more creative. All right. All right, let's do it. What were the three? All right, before you were Grammy Dan, before you found Artists Who Thrive, what were your three big fat problems? Uh, they were big. Um, the first thing is I just didn't <laughs> I didn't know what to do with money. I didn't know how to manage money. I didn't know I didn't understand how money works in the world. It felt like a foreign it felt like a burden. It felt like this thing I had to deal with en route to being able to do my art. Um, I so I just didn't understand both the energetics of money or the specific tangible ways that people use money as a tool and wield it well. I just was, it felt like this awkward burden. And, and how did uh, that get solved? What changed? Um, that solved mostly through uh, reading. I read a ton of, um, I read a ton of books. I got counsel. I mean, you're going to see a theme as I got counsel. I mean, uh, I was working with you. You had worked out a lot around that, so you were a great counselor about that. And then there's just, there's just, I read hundreds of books about it, of which sometimes less than 10% of the book I absorbed. But when you read 100 books and you absorb, I mean, eventually I, I, I got my skills together. Um, and a lot of what I did, too, was um, I learned how to spend money on things that make me more money. Like I spent money on coaching, but that was something that made me a, a bunch more money. So I, I learned the difference between investing and spending even on myself, you know, so that was that was really important. So that's a big thing. So the big pro you had a problem around money and then you just learned learning the difference between investing and spending. Huge, huge, huge lesson. Okay, what was the problem what was the other problem that you had? Uh, a lack of belief in myself it was like a um, there was a there's too much you know it's funny a little certain kinds of doubts can prod you forward you know a certain amount of insecurity um, I know is somewhat productive because it can it, it makes you burn for something but at a certain point um, uh, th there's a diminishing returns point so I learned how to think better um, and to, about myself and and uh, celebrate myself as much or more than I was. I still criticize myself positively, you know, in, in, a, in an upbeat and honest manner, like this needs to be better, got to improve this, that, and the other thing. But I, I also learned how to celebrate my wins. So how did you learn how to criticize yourself better and celebrate your wins? And uh, the, the, real, the, the real thing, uh, the real difference came um, in just making sure that I didn't just criticize myself. I had to get just, you have to be just as good at celebrating yourself. I was already really good at criticizing myself. So I didn't need any practice on that. So I wouldn't say I changed it, but somehow balancing it out, it creates balance in the force. So, um, and you know, the force being a magical thing from the movie, but balance in, in myself. Um, right. So I'm still, I, I'm still a tough critic of my work, but I do so not out of, um, you know, without venom toward myself, just kind of out of a, des out of a desire to be better. And, right. Uh, yeah. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's actually more realistic, too, balancing it, balancing criticism with praise. So what was the other, what was the third big problem that you had before? This is something that you helped me with a lot, which was um, I was scattered. If uh, if we weren't on a live chat, I'd say scattered as, and then you, you can, can uh, No, a scattered We're as, not live. We're recording. As, on as onions on a grill. <laughs> scattered. I was, uh, I was scattered, smothered, and covered. Um, which is something they say. There's the, there are these horrible restaurants called Waffle Houses here in oh, the south. Oh yeah, I've and, heard about them. And, and you can get your you can get your potatoes scattered, smothered, and covered. And that's how I was. Um, I was all over the place. And um, you know, we worked a lot. One of the most important things is that uh, 
you have you'd have me do these uh, weekly check-ins, and so that was a way to uh, three thousand feet or ten thousand feet instead of right in my face. And what did I do this week? What do I want to do next week? And um, and you every week reserved the right to cancel all further sessions if I didn't do it, and that was and that scared the crap out of me. So I was like, this. This woman for real. So. Well, because the, 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 your market will cancel you if you don't do at least that. I agree. And so you, um, that also helped me with my belief in self, actually. Going back to number two, um, you know, that just that having somebody I respect, like I respect you, um, and showing up for what you asked me to do, um, that changed my belief in myself. That's another great way. You know, you can, like, um, build belief in yourself by doing affirmations and saying I'm the best and I'm good and everyone loves, you know, you can do, I actually love affirmations to some degree, but also just um, keeping your agreements with yourself and others, that's a great way to believe in yourself more, like I'll do what I say I'll do, and that that's a great, simple, very, uh, that's a time-tested, non-new agey way of uh, getting more belief in yourself by doing what you say. And Small you commitments help lead to bigger commitments, or the ability to keep bigger commitments to yourself and to others and to your marketplace. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, so, um, and you said you were like drawn to artists who thrive. That whole that notion, that phrase, that blog name. What was the? Well, why? Why was that such a refreshing or astounding title for you? I can go off about this um, because your very spirit was so refined all the way down to your name that your name is as powerful as you are and you're powerful. You have this um, clarity as to who you are and what you're doing and, and you're, it's just such a freaking clear and perfect expression, artists who thrive. Like who doesn't want to be, like you have to be an idiot not to want to be in that club. As soon as I saw it, I was like, whatever else I was doing, I was like, F that. And I was right there, and then I signed up. And then you were like, oh, sorry, I don't work with musicians. And you're like, yes, you do. You work with them. I wouldn't take it. I, I would have, like, driven there and just shown up on your door. That would have been awkward. So luckily you accepted me. Because um, it, it was just, um, you know, when, when something is right, tends to resonate as right all the way down to the core, down to the name, down to the logo, down to the website. And your website was clean and beautiful and updated consistently. I mean, like, artists who thought it looked thriving. And then I went to Anne Ray's painting website, and the colors were vibrant, and there was stuff, you know, that you could buy from hundreds of thousands of dollars to, like, a five... Two dollar postcard. It was like everything. You know, somebody's like walking the walk, and that was in the first ten minutes. I'm like, all right, I'm I'm signing up. I don't know what this lady's eating for breakfast, but I'm gonna find out and start eating it so, too. Just to be clear, have I paid you for anything you're saying? Um, you said my hair looked good. I did. Uh, I did. That was uh. So I will take. You paid me in one compliment. I gave you one would... compliment. All right. So now you. <laughs> Does it? It does look good. It looks good. I remember you were doing, you had different hair when we I didn't, get paid a single, I didn't get paid a single solitary cent, people. Um, don't be a numbskull. Um, <laughs> my, uh, my income has gone up um, so significantly as a result of my relationship with Anne Ray, and um, I get absolutely bubkiss except for um, a, a great opportunity to get back to a mentor of mine. And... Um, uh, this is the real stuff, and it works, and I'm living it. So um, you, you, I know so many uh, artists think that there are there there is no light at the end of the tunnel, or there's no, there's no method to this, and there is, and it works. And the only thing holding you back um, are the same, you know, unproductive thoughts. You know, you're most a lot of people are just doing the same crap that isn't working, and so. Um, I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to try something new, and it worked in in dozens of ways, and it has made me, um, you know, 
hundreds of thousands of dollars, not tens of thousands of dollars. I mean, this, is, this has been a, an, an absolutely, it was what, four or five years ago, four, f about five years ago that we yeah. worked and, and it, uh, um, it worked quickly and has continued to work. And, and it being a host of really tangible things that you can do for your spirit and, you know, technically and tangibly. So, um, so no, I don't get a cent, but I want to see other people get the opportunities that I have. So if you had to give other artists one piece of parting advice, like one thing you could say, or, or even that version of yourself that had those problems and didn't know what to do about it, which what, what's one piece of parting advice you'd give people? Uh, get help. Um, and that's on multiple levels. Um, I have hired an assistant engineer who's in another room working in my music studio on stuff. So as I'm doing this interview, projects for my studio are being fixed and uh, I was seeing a client in the other room and files were getting exported. Um, I got coaches, coaching with Ann and a number of other people. I still do. I spent a lot of money on coaching um, and I will always do that. And I New coaches, new books, new programs. Um, get help. Um, there's this weird um, self-flagellating, dragging yourself through the desert cross to bear, artist, bull crap, um, uh, it doesn't work. The more help I get, um, the more money I make and the better art I make. You can't do it alone. And right. um, I don't know any very successful person in a creative field, music, uh, visual art, um, that is completely uh, solitary in their efforts. There, it, just, it just doesn't work. There's too much to do. And so you have to know when to outsource, and you have to experiment with that. And the first thing to do is to study with somebody who's already doing it. And uh, even down to, I wrote a book with Joe Vitale called The Remembering Process. Well, we had really great editors help us edit it. I didn't want to sit there and edit every word. We wrote the book, and then we got help, and it goes on and on and on. Get help. And, you didn't design the cover, you didn't distribute no. the books, is that what you're saying? No, we didn't do the legal, we hired a lawyer, we got a publicist, we got editors. Um, you know, there's, there's a way in which you, one of the skills of being an artist is learning what to do yourself, and that usually involves the things you are best at, the things that you have that little spark of genius in, and then you start to learn first small and, and manageable and financially manageable in, in larger and larger ways to outsource the things that don't suit you and what you're doing. Let me be the devil's advocate and say, ask you, well, what, I can't afford it. I can't afford it. What, what do you say? Um, I understand. And first of all, uh, I would tell you first thing is never say I can't afford it. At the very least, I can't afford it yet. Add the word yet to what you're saying because one of the things I learned from Anne and from all the great teachers is that your language will um, predict your future. So I can't afford it yet. So, or uh, and even better is I'm not sure how to afford it yet. Uh, the first thing that you can do, um, I'm not a huge fan of bartering, but early on when I had more time than money, I did use it and I did it successfully. So um, yeah, yeah. So so barter a little bit and find somebody, find the things that you need done but aren't great at and find somebody who um, you can trade with. Um, there are online resources, ways to get help free. Um, someone like, Aunt, you know, there are, even for coaching, if you can't afford a coaching program, um, th I will say this, I have a challenge. If somebody wants to work with Ann um, or myself or anyone and doesn't, oh, I want to, but I can't afford it, that person better have every single free resource printed out and completed and in a binder like I have done every single thing that you have offered for free and when and if once they finished all of those Later. they're going to be able to afford you you know like that's um, that I'm, I'd be amazed at how many people think they can't afford it but haven't scoured every nook and cranny of your um, website, blog, and resources, and printed out every blog post and applied it to them. There's just so much there. There's so much meat on the bone, especially these days when most of the great teachers have free as part of their, have like a very valuable free 
free information uh, package as part of their offer. There's just tons out there, and uh, a lot of people aren't making good on that. And, I agree. And, and you can make if that is one way you can start to increase your income. And um, so, yeah, this is great. This is perfect. So, thank you for sharing the your problems and challenges and how you resolve them specifically. And I think that's a great piece of parting advice. Get help. I get help. I have mentors. I don't have it all figured out because I want to take things up to a higher level and I, I, I want to do it quickly and I don't want to spend a lot of time, money, and frustration doing it. So I get help and you still get help and we all need to gain specialized knowledge and uh, specialized knowledge is some of it's free and some of it you got to pay for. That's all there is to it. Yep. All right, Grammy Dan, I thank you so much for your time and your energy and your enthusiasm, and I'm so proud of you and happy for your success and your continued success, which I see when we go to the Grammy Award ceremony and a clap for you. <laughs> and and uh, and I, I again I. All kidding aside, I get absolutely nothing other than the um, opportunity to recommend you to others, which I do wholeheartedly. So, um, you people, uh, uh, write in right now because this has been uh, one of the best decisions of my whole life to work with uh, you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, Grammy Dan, I'll be talking to you soon. I know I will. You will. You will. We'll be doing another remembering process. I think it's your turn. Okay, it's my turn. Is yeah. It my turn? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, talk to you later. Bye. Bye.